Good evening. Welcome to our Ascension Day worship. Special welcome to the many guests that we have with us tonight. We ask our guests, please fill out a guest card and hand it to an usher or to a pastor so that we can remember your visit today. Take a few moments and greet those around you and introduce yourself if you see a new face. Please stand for the opening sentences. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Be our light and scatter the darkness. Lord God, we thank you for this day of grace now drawing to a close. Stay with us and warm our hearts with your forgiving love in Christ. By your word, keep our faith burning brightly that we may walk in the light of your presence through the darkness of this world. Come and bless us as we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
The first reading is from the first chapter of Acts. This reading will be the basis for tonight's sermon. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the Lord God of our, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The word of the Lord.
Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the Scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Please note that a sixth verse of the hymn of the day is on the next page.
Grace and peace to you from him who was and who is and who is to come, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It was almost two weeks ago that we had our examination of the confirmands in which I asked them questions about Christian doctrine, all the parts of the catechism, and every year, it always happens, I get to the Lord's Prayer section, and I ask the question, what is God's kingdom? The first answer they give is always heaven. And so I have to ask them, just heaven, only heaven? God is the creator of heaven and earth. Certainly those are part of God's kingdom too. What is God's kingdom? Well, in the Lord's Prayer, we are specifically asking for God's kingdom to come to a certain place to the human heart. God's kingdom comes when people hear the word of God, believe it, and strive to live it. That's the kingdom that we pray for in the Lord's Prayer. People are often confused about the kingdom of God. And those first disciples were confused too. In Acts chapter 1, St. Luke tells us Jesus appeared to his disciples over a period of 40 days and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. Well, we've heard Jesus speak about the kingdom of God in many of his parables. And there he is always talking about how people hear the word of God, believe it, and strive to live it. We think of the parable of the mustard seed, the smallest of seeds that then grows into the biggest of plants. The kingdom of God is like a farmer planting seed in the field, and some of it falls on the rocks, and some of it falls among the weeds, and some of it falls on the path, and some of it falls on good soil where it springs up and produces a great crop. People hear the word of God, believe it, strive to live it, and then proceed to spread that kingdom of God. In Acts chapter 1, we heard Jesus talk about that kingdom of God just a little bit when Jesus said, you will receive the gift my Father promised. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There he's talking about that kingdom of God being strengthened in the disciples, God's rule, God's ruling activity in them so that they would then be empowered to spread that message. As they were meeting with Jesus One of the disciples asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus hadn't been talking about that kingdom at all. Instead of the misunderstanding of God's kingdom as being only heaven, well, some of the disciples had their ideas set on a kingdom on earth. You see, at that time, the people in Judea were living under the Roman Empire, and they were paying taxes to Caesar, and they had Caesar's soldiers marching through their streets. They wanted to get rid of that, make Israel its own great nation again. Lord, are you going to, at this time, restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus didn't come to bring an earthly kingdom like that. 
Another misunderstanding of God's kingdom is that when we pray your kingdom come, we're talking about the end of the world. That's when God's kingdom will come to its fulfillment. That's when there will be the new heavens and the new earth, something beyond our understanding. Jesus speaks to his disciples and says, it's not for you to know the times and the dates. They had their hearts set on an earthly kingdom, well, the new heavens and the new earth. The end of the world, Jesus previously in the Gospels had said, no one knows the day or the hour, but keep watch. Here he says, it's not for you to know the days or the hours that the Father has set by his own authority. And then he goes back and teaches about the true kingdom of God. He says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and to the ends of the earth. Think again of the kingdom of God as people hear the word of God, believe it, and strive to live it. You will be my witnesses to the end of the earth. This kingdom of God is in our hands now. Yes, God is the one who rules, but we are his witnesses here at the ends of the earth. We have the message that brings the kingdom to people's hearts. What message is that? That message is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our risen Lord, who conquered death by his own death, who took our guilt on himself as the Lamb of God, that is the kingdom of God too. We heard that earlier where forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to the ends of the earth. Repentance will pre be preached in his name to the ends of the earth. Oh, repentance is people hearing the word of God, believing it, and making a change as they strive to live it. Forgiveness of sins, well, that is the object, that is the purpose why Jesus came and gave his life to make us his own. You will be my witnesses, Jesus said, and you will be my witnesses, Jesus says, to you and me. How can we do that? First of all, by letting that kingdom of God come to us as we continue to hear the word of God, believe it, and reflect his glory, reflect the glory of his love in everything that we do. And then with our words, a witness is somebody who sees something and then says, says, says something. We have seen God's glory and the glory of his love as we know our sins are forgiven, as we have seen the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus on the pages of Scripture, as we have heard the glory of that message presented to us in worship That message is for us to share. That is why we gather week by week. That is why we operate a Christian school, to be his witnesses, to share what we have heard and seen of the glory of God in Jesus. In the last year, at St. Stephen's with the work of our elders and the work of our in-reach callers, we have been reaching out to call back people we haven't seen in a while. We have seen some.
come back. We have found some opportunities for people that we pastors can go visit on a regular basis. That is our work as being his witnesses. There's other work we can do too. Maybe you have heard of a church in Beaver Dam closing this month. Maybe you know some people who attended that church. You can invite them. Come. Hear your Savior's voice here. There are many people. You can befriend. You can encourage. You can invite. This is the task he has given each one of us. The same task he gave his disciples. You will be my witnesses. Amen. Please rise for the prayers. 
Our special prayers have been requested for Lynn Reesey, who will be having surgery on Monday. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders of our synod and district, for all pastors in Christ, for all who are servants of the church, and for all the people of God, let us pray to the Lord. For all who govern our nation and for all public servants, that they may be upheld and strengthened for every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, for those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Gracious Father, all health and healing are gifts from your hand. We pray for Lynn Reesey, give her doctors and nurses the wisdom and skill they need to work for her healing. While she waits and faces many unknowns, calm all doubts and fears with the word of your promise, that nothing can separate us from your love that is ours in Christ Jesus our Lord. Speed her healing if it is your will, and give her an extra measure of patience as she waits for you to work all these things out for her good. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus, King of glory, on this day you ascended far above the heavens, and at God's right hand you rule the nations. Leave us not alone, we pray, but grant us the spirit of truth, that at your command and by your power, we may be your witnesses in all the world, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Abide with us and with your whole church. Abide with us in the evening of the day, in the evening of life, in the evening of the world. Abide with us in your grace and goodness, in your holy word and sacrament, in your comfort and blessing. Abide with us when we are overcome by the night of sorrow and fear, by the night of doubt and affliction, by the night of bitter death. Abide with us and with all your people in time and in eternity. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Praise God. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
God's blessings on your weekend. See many of you again tomorrow and on Sunday.